Good morning, my viewers and my, my team on YouTube. I got my great friend and loyal client of mine for many years that I've been cutting him for, uh, Mr. Coat. Um, this is this is a client of mine that I enjoy cutting, enjoy the conversation. Um, very wise and, and educated man. And he actually served in the military in uh, what year? 1954 until 1985. So 30 years. And now I'm 84 years old. 84 years old, still coming into the barbershop, getting a nice haircut. I mean, he, he came in with these pictures and I was just so amazed with, even, you know, that long ago, how detailed, you know, the haircuts were. And so he brought in this picture and he said that there's anything that we can do to kind of get that type of contrast, that type of haircut. And I was like, let's do it. I mean, look, he had a great full head of hair. I'm sure any barber. This is 1985. 1985. And I think any barber would love to cut your hair <laughs> right there. But um, this is just something that I wanted to share with y'all. And, you know, for the respects of serving our country and sacrificing for what you did for us, sir. Thank you. Um, so let's go ahead and get into this haircut tutorial. So what I'm going to do around the sides is I'll knock it down. Yeah, whatever, whatever you think is good. Yeah, I want to knock it down to at least maybe like a two or a three, and then get lower into the around the ear area. You have any any wise uh, knowledge or nuggets to tell these young up and coming barbers or students or kids, anyone you know pursuing the military? Do you have any um, advice for any of them? Well, if you if you both so, military is, is, a, is a, when for me it was great. Um, uh, I got that thing, uh, went in when I was 18 hey, you know, like and I retired when I was 48. And, you run them a little bit, wow. get, get this type of food, it'll break uh, down like really well. And when I went in, all I had place. was a ninth grade education. And uh, when I retired, so I, got it or whatever, I had a, like, a high school GED, like a, month, a bachelor's degree in, the county, degree in accounting from the University of Nebraska. And and a uh, uh, airline transport pilot commercial license. So he was basically okay. all that I got in while I was in the military. So yeah. he's on the thirty years so out there. Mine, so military can be uh, <laughs> can be a blessing, big time. Yeah. If you want it to be. If you, if you decide you want to serve your country. It's a great way to do it. Yeah, and, and, and I always say like it's not for everybody. No, it's not. It isn't. But for those that I mean, there's some kids that are just born into it, and mm -hmm. and they just have a you know that gut feeling that they're you know it's in them. Right. And you know someone like you. And they made a career out of it, and it's just it's a wonderful and it's amazing. It's a blessing that you made it out mm -hmm. of war and all the stuff that you've seen and been through. Yeah, three tours of duty in Vietnam, uh, 1960, 61, 1967, 68, and then 70, 71. Wow. Wow. See, I wasn't even around. I wasn't even a thought back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you know, my grandpa served in the military as well. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if he fought beside you, but he was definitely in the military around that, around that time. And he was still telling me a lot of stories as well. Was he Army Air Force or what? He was Army. Okay. So did you have family whenever you were in? Yeah, well, I was in, I went in in 54. I got uh, married in 1961. And so how long have you been married for? I've been married now for 40, years, see, 81. 40 years of marriage. I, I, I pray to God I make it there. It's cold. I'm on, uh, on six years of marriage. Amen. <laughs> I've been with my wife now for going on 11 years mm -hmm. and married for six. Mm -hmm. That's great. So, 
And what's crazy is whenever I proposed to my wife, I had spoke to a, a older gentleman that had been married for 50 years. Mm -hmm. And and before I proposed to her, he had you know told me that that was like the best decision he's ever made in his life. And it's and it's funny because he always him and his wife always carried a picture for prom whenever they were in high school. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just you know it's beautiful. It, it's none of that none of that really exists anymore. Mm -hmm. And 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 it, it's it's one of those things that. I definitely admire, um, you know, that many years of marriage. It's the mm -hmm. second job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the second job, and yep. as long as you got God on your side and you got it, and communication is there, and you know, it, that's your best friend. Mm -hmm. That's your best friend. It doesn't always work out for some, but mm -hmm. you know, I, I knew she was the one. That's good. <laughs> and two kids later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I, I pray I make it, you know, I am pray that I have a conversation with a young guy when I'm around your age saying mm -hmm. that I've been married for 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Bible tells us to love our wives as Christ loved the church and gave his life for us. Amen. So, yeah. we, uh, that's how our job in that fact, uh, we, uh, we need to model for our kids what the marriage is all about. Yeah, yeah. There's a poem that I learned some time, some years ago, and it's, it's, it's a, a father talking to his son, and he said to him, he said, well, what do you want to be, my boy, when you reach your manhood years? You want to be a doctor, a lawyer, and have to great, move the crowd through laughter and tears? Yeah. But he shook his head, his head as he gave his reply, in that serious way that he had, he said, "I don't care to be any of them, Dad. I want to be just, I want to be just like you, Dad." Oh wow! And then he goes on and says, "He wants to be like his dad, you men. Did you ever think as you pause that the boy who watches your every move is building a set of laws? He's molding a life that you're the model for, and whether it's good or bad depends on the kind of example that you set for the boy who wants to be like his dad. Right? If you have him do everything you do, have what you have, have him go everywhere you go, do the." And do the things you do, and see everything that your eyes behold, and who all the gods that you rule. When you see the worship that shines in the eyes of your lovely little big, lad, would you rest content if he got his wish and grew up to be just like you, Dad? The blessing of having a child to raise mm. who wants to be just like his dad, or her dad, or her dad. And that, 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 that's, uh, something that's, that's something that's always right? stuck with you, huh? Yeah. Almost you want to be like, like Tennessee. You know yeah, I feel like yep. now that I have children, it's it's now you. It's not what they know; it's what you teach them. You got it. And Absolutely. and they they're gonna know and only see what you give them and what you teach them. You got them. it. So the best gift you can give any kid, any child of yours, is a is a good example. Mm. The greatest is the, the greatest. Um, uh, uh, thing that a girl can do for her father is to say, I want to I want to a guy just like my dad. Mm, yeah. And 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 a, and a son say, I want to marry a woman just like my mom. Right. And that you, makes a difference in the world. Whatever goes on in your household or between you and your spouse, you that's it. what's you know mirroring through your children. Your children. You got it. You are mirror. You are you are showing them the example. Exactly. exactly. Whether it's good or bad depends on what you all do. Right. Right. Amen. Right. And I'm learning. It's not oh, nothing sure, that yeah. I know. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a young father. I'm 30 years old, mm -hmm. and I got two children. One that's five, going on six, and I just had a newborn October 13th. Mm -hmm. And um, I tell my daughter every day. There's not a day that doesn't go by that I say you're teaching me something new every day. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the few that. Um, I actually enjoy him calling me and texting me if I have, you know, anything available. Mm -hmm. Usually my clients go to the app and book an appointment, but whenever I see his, you know, his name pop up, I'm just like, oh man, it's going to be a great conversation, uh, good vibes, and I know that, you know, you love your haircut, right? and, and you're 84 years old, still coming to the barbershop, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a blessing that I see you get out of the car, walk into the shop, like it's... I'm sure you've been through so much and you're still mm -hmm. willing and able to um, have the opportunity to come into yeah. a barbershop. The Lord's been good to me, big time. Don't <laughs> Amen. You the body. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Yeah, life is worth living. Don't you worry about it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... 
I don't see how, or, I mean, I understand that there's some really mental issues out there for people to, to want to take their own life, but I mean, yeah. it's, life is so precious. I it is, man. Life is so precious, and it's, if, if you got all two legs, if you got two legs and two arms and two eyes, you got to be thankful. Okay. There's people out there that got it ten times worse than you, and mm -hmm. you just got to keep pushing. You may think that you're not a bad, mm -hmm. but the next person to you has it ten times you worse. You got it. You have right. Ten times worse. Yep. Whatever you're going through in life, you got to use it as you can't use it as a crutch. That's right. Sometimes you got to knock that crutch down and make a bridge, you got it. go right over through it. Because right. once you reach success and happiness, mm -hmm. whatever you were going through, it's going to be that much. It's like bittersweet. It's right. going to be that much better. Mm -hmm. Or that's not redundant. It's going to be that you know much more fulfilling mm -hmm. when. Um, you become to that point where you know you have success and some happiness and you look back at what you went through mm -hmm. and it's like man i've been on the bottom i've been through the struggle i don't want to go back mm -hmm. i don't want to go back for my kids i don't want to go back for myself mm -hmm. I know yep. there's a lot of young couples or young men and women out there that are struggling, but just know you're not in it by yourself. Exactly Everyone right. has a story. Yep. Everyone has a journey. Hey, after, after he said Everyone that, you know, has a journey. Oh my God. Do you remember when you uh, when you were younger going to a barbershop how much a haircut used to cost? I think uh, uh, well in the military, yeah, you get a play, hair, you get a haircut for a book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's say you want to keep so, your sideburns. You say yes, they right. cut it off and hand it to you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't line you up. <laughs> I had talked to another client of mine. He was, I think, he was in his about in his eighties. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me that he remembered, you know, haircuts being about a dollar, mm -hmm. you know, 50 cents. Mm -hmm. And that was without tip. Like, that was right. a good price for a haircut. Mm -hmm. And, you know, fast forward 2020, mm -hmm. you know, I, I honestly feel like sky's the limit on haircut prices. And there's, and there's um, different prices for haircuts. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like whatever the barber feels that he's worth. Mm -hmm. And it's not even just a haircut. It could be the relationship with the client. Yeah. It could be the conversation. You never know who's sitting in your chair. You never know what advice or information that you can give to your client. Or you can give to the barber um, to make their day go by better or make their life a little bit better. Because I feel like barbers are not just barbers. We're counselors. We're friends. You know, we're listeners. We're great listeners. Um, I've had people come in here that I don't even know and just spill their whole life story to me, you know. Um, um, and that's why I, I like to go off of a good friend of mine, Macho Torres. He believes in building uh, relationships mm -hmm. before a clientele. Mm -hmm. um, because that's a big thing, you know, for me. I'm a great, you know, I'm a family man, I'm a husband. So relationships for me uh, come a dime a dozen. So mm -hmm. if I feel like I can build that relationship with my client outside of the shop, mm -hmm. or even just, you know, talking, um, it just makes it that much better for getting a haircut. It's not, to me, it's not just putting clippers on the head. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, building relationships. Mm -hmm. I think I've been cutting your hair now for. It started when you were down on the down the uh, uh, Sun Lake location. Uh, yeah, down there. So it's, it's been it's been about five years. Yeah, going on five years. Yeah. Um, and every time, every haircut, it's, it's a great conversation. Mm -hmm. I I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Yeah. So, you got at least three or four seasons of where you don't want to pay somebody $5. And you got a factor in the day get hurt. And you got a factor in the day get hurt. They get hurt. They get hurt. Yeah, I thought it was way good. For sure. I see. You can't knock that as good as that at all. How are we going, man?
You gotta show Shannon those pictures. That's I'm telling you, you probably gonna be like, wow. <laughs> This haircut was done in what year again? Uh, 19, let's see, this is, I was 31 years old, so uh, 36, 46, 56, 1957. 1957, this haircut no, 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 was no, no, done. No, 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 no. Yeah, 57. 1957, this haircut was done. And that barber did an amazing job. But fast forward to 2020, 84 years of young age and my man still kicking coming into the barbershop and i was able to you know kind of replicate the haircut <laughs> took some years off for him got him feeling right feeling good and i know my wife will be pleased big time oh yeah he walked into the house she was like hey how you doing <laughs> Well, God bless you, Mr. Cole, man, and always thank you. It's a pleasure for always coming in, and the conversation is mutual. Um, I love the relationship we have, man. Thank you. Thank you for coming in and allowing us to record this, and hopefully some, you know, some youth get some, some wisdom out of this and some good knowledge. God bless you, and thank you for your services, sir. You're welcome.